What would happen if we put the best possible goaltender into the NHL starting at the age of 18. The goaltender enters the league at 99 overall with maxed out stats, loaded with abilities and x-factors, and just for good measure, also has the high franchise potential. Will they dominate and win many Stanley Cups? Will they be able to beat Martin Broder's record of 691 wins? Or will they maybe not have as much of an impact as we think? There's only one way to find out. So, without further ado, let's jump into this career. Let's get started with Scott Sterling, but this time not be a pro Scott Sterling. It will be the franchise goaltender, which I mean, he kind of isn't be a pro as well. But anyway, the best goalie you could possibly ask for. Max stats, full of abilities, high franchise potential, still expected to be drafted. I don't even, like, was it eighth? Something like that? It wasn't very high. Don't get me wrong, eighth is still good, but... You know what I'm trying to say, considering the potential of this goaltender and straight up their current overall, they go to Philadelphia. So there you have it, a draft pick to the Flyers. Matt Duchesne, Konechny, and Farabee will make up the first line. The team doesn't look super strong going into year one, but maybe Scotty Boy can come in and sort of turn things around here. Signs a max entry level contract at 975. For three years and the team does not make the playoffs finishing sixth in the metro but scott had some pretty good stats here a 917 save percentage 22 wins in his first season didn't really get a whole lot of offensive help as you could see there it would be the oilers taking home the stanley cup for year number two and jonathan quick hangs up the mini wheats with 392 wins in his career the team more or less looks about the same going into the third season of the simulation, the second of Scott's career. The team finishes sixth in the Metro again. This time we see 25 wins from Scott, but a sub 900 save percentage. How are you doing that? At 99 overall, impossible. The Buffalo Sabres win the cup this time around and Halak will be the most winning goaltender retiring for that year. Once again, no major changes to the Flyers, but Scott Sterling drops to a 96. In just his third season, that is crazy. They do make the playoffs this time, though, with 94 points, and we see a 913 save percentage with 32 wins from our boy Scotty. Vazzy leads the league with 41, and it would be the Jerks taking down the Avs in the finals this time around. Marc Andre Fleury with 571 wins. Let's go, Flower. Absolute legend. The team is still looking more or less the same. Scott back up to 99 overall, which is good to see. And he signs an 8x8, essentially, right here, which is a good deal for him. Katahat still has four years left on his deal. And the team misses out on the playoffs again. Seemed to really like finishing sixth in the Metro. Scott Sterling did have a 900 save percentage, but still, for a 99 overall goalie, can't be doing that. Another cup for the Jerks as well. It would be Farabee, Frost, and Konechny once again for the first line of the Philadelphia Flyers. The defense still looking... Not tremendous overall. Sterling down to a 98 overall. And this time they drop one more position from 6th to 7th in the Metro. Scott almost had a 9-10, but a horrible record. Only 23 wins. Spencer Knight had an unbelievable season. The Oilers take down Detroit in the Stanley Cup Finals, and it only took them five games. Bobrovsky, far and away, the best goalie retiring that year in terms of wins. Now, the Flyers did get a high draft pick, and they get Eric Manning. It's going to be a right-wing power forward for this team, and hopefully he can help them get back on their feet and start to see some success. The team finished sixth in the Metro right back to where they started, so at least he got them back up to there. Scott had 26 wins, just over a 900. There would be a three-way goalie tie for most wins between Shesterkin, Demko, and Hellebuck. And how about Kale McCarr putting up 113, tying Austin Matthews for most in the league. Manning also won the Calder, so things looking bright for the Flyers. And it would be the Avs and Canes in the finals. This time, the Avs take the dub. Frost, Verhage, and Manning now the first line. So we're starting to see some changes here. Seth Jones and Philip Ronick as well. And no more Kata Hat. The team finished third in the league. What a turnaround, and what a fast turnaround at that. Manning had 92 points in just his second year, and we see a 921 from Scotty, who takes home the Vesna. The Ducks win the cup, and the Flyers got rinsed. A sweep by the Jerks in round one. But still, 
you love to see that turnaround. Where did Jones go? Did they really sign him to a one-year deal? Or did they trade him away? Apparently it didn't matter because they finished second in the league this time around. Moving up one spot from the previous year and Scott would have a 920 save percentage and lead the league for wins with 43 grabbing a Vesna in the process. However, once again, they would be deleted in the playoffs. They did make it to the conference finals this time, but Montreal sort of made light work of them, if I'm gonna be honest. Manning is continuing to look like the TSN turning point for this franchise. Overall, the team just looks much better. They finished third in the Metro with 101 points. How about New Jersey with 123? Very solid. Scott would be third in the league with 44 wins. Kachekov at 50. Absolutely nuts. Here's some playoff stats as well. If you are curious, it would be an unsuccessful playoff run yet again. First rounded by the Pity Pens and Andre Vasilevsky almost at 600 wins. Is that any good? It is. The defensive core, where'd it go? is my question, because it's non-existent. The offense looks pretty good. Defensively, maybe they're just really leaning on Scott, which evidently that did not work. He did have a 9-10, however. Frosty, 96 points. Manning, point a game. But you gotta get my boy Scott some help. Get him one defenseman, at least. Somebody back there. McDusty retires with 2,000 points and very close to 800 goals, and Jari leads the goaltender retirement class with 334 wins. The team is sort of on a downward trend again here, which is surprising, considering they just had some recent success after being not so good for a while. They did, however, make the playoffs with just 89 points, managed to sneak in. Manning had 90 points this year, and Sterling, in the playoffs, had a 921, but they were swept by the Islanders in round number two. Clearly, he had his guy, so... I'm going to put that one on the offense. Speaking of the offense, here it is. Nico Heischer has been obtained to play with Manning. That is huge. Defensive core, still nowhere to be found. But Scott's back up to 99, so that's got to be a positive. Signs another 8x8-ish, closer to an 8x9, but the Flyers are out of the playoffs this year with 40 wins. Manning did put up 105, so the offense was there. Scott's stats were all right. They just couldn't get it done as a team. He even takes home the Vesna, which is unbelievable. The Leafs beat out the Jets in the Stanley Cup final. A Canadian versus Canadian team final. Unbelievable. Slavkovsky joining that first line now. I, you can see I'm kind of freaking out because I'm like, what are they doing here? Grab a defenseman. Maybe they know something I don't because they finished second in the Metro with 97 points. And Scotty Boy had a 909. 38 wins got deleted in the playoffs, though. Absolutely rinsed. An 888 save percentage. Another sweep at the hands of the New York Islanders. What a career from Nate. And unfortunately, Nico is also done. So that is going to be a dent to this Philadelphia squadron. We've had some battles with Stewie and Bia Pro, and we see Katahat retiring, the former. Philadelphia Flyers netminder, which obviously has been taken over by this guy right here, Scott Sterling, 98 overall. The Flyers would not make the playoffs, back to their favorite sixth spot in the Metro. 9-10 at a Scotty with basically a three GAA. The Oilers swept in the Stanley Cup Finals. Boo! Boo this team! Even if you can sweep in the Finals, don't do it. Give the fans something. This team's looking worse for wear. But somehow they finish fourth in the league. I don't get it. Makes zero sense. But they get 106. And 41 wins from Scott with a 299 GAA. Another unsuccessful playoff run. They cannot seem to get it going in the postseason. Sub 900 from Scott as they were deleted by the New York Rangers in six games. Spencer Knight, 442. Good on ya. McKenna, how? And our boy Manning, the top line for the Flyers who put up 100 this season, fourth in the Metro. The first line's buzzing. Definitely seeing some action from them. The numbers are there. Scott with a 908, 34 wins. Overall, pretty solid. Look at Bedard in the playoffs. 42 points in 24 games. Even our guys kind of went off. And you saw it. It was a deep playoff run. And they do it. Finally. 
the Philadelphia Flyers take down Chicago in the Stanley Cup Final. Jake Ottinger, 560 wins. Insane. They have another successful season, finishing second in the entire league. Look how good the offense is for this team out of nowhere. Scott was down to 94 overall, but he still put up some okay numbers. I mean, not 94 okay, but acceptable, maybe, except in the playoffs. Although somehow, even though he was lacking, they made it to the conference finals. And there goes Tanner Howe with 1,000 points flat. Thank you for making that a satisfying number. Philadelphia remains in the playoff picture. 101 points and 48 wins. Good enough for third in the Metro. Sterling and Hornquist kind of split the duty this year. 913 save percentage from Scott and nearly a 920 in the playoffs, but only six games played. Him and Hornquist take home the Jennings and the Senators beat the Oilers in the finals, taking six games. The Capitals would be the demise of the Flyers in round one. Look at these goalies. Barely played any games, but great numbers. A 984. Absurd. Still no defensive core going on here. And Scott's all the way down to 87 now, but they finished third in the league with 115. Riddle me that. I don't understand this game. Never will. I've accepted it. 115 from the Mad Lad. And Scotty second in the league with a 910. 292. Horrible playoff run again. He's lucky he got his cup when he did. Because no shot. They're getting near one right now. Swept by the Blue Jackets. Very rough go. And Jesper Wallstedt retires with 530 wins. We now have Oleg Kuznetsov. On the first line, just wanted to show you some stats there for Manning, his career stats. Scott signs a one-year, $7.5 million deal. The success of the Flyers continues as they finish second in the Metro with 99 points. Scott had horrible stats. Even worse playoff stats in 829. You cannot make this up. And swept by the Blue Jackets once more. Finally, moving is Scott Sterling. Goes from the Flyers to the St. Louis Blues in free agency. He's all the way down to 82 overall, has only two abilities, and signs a one-year, $3.6 million deal. They finish seventh in the Central, an 880 out of Scott. It's looking bleak. The Jerks win another cup in this sim, taking out the Vancouver Canucks. And I don't want to be that guy, but Scott, it's time to let go. Starting in the AHL at 81 overall, no abilities left, signs a two-year deal at 2.6 million. You know what? Actually, never mind. I'm on Team U. Get your money. They're still offering him contracts, so why not? In his final season, he will be with the Flow Rider Panthers, who look okay. 79 overall. They do not make the loss. They finish fifth in the Atlantic Division. Belak went off, though. 122. Can't blame him. And Scott had 27 wins with an 883 save percentage. Absolutely disgusting. And after that, at the young age of 42, Scott finally decides to hang up the mini wheats. He finishes with 713 wins, a 907 save percentage, and a 307 GAA. His most successful year was with the Flyers. 47 wins, which, I mean, that checks out. He was with Philadelphia for quite some time there and did not do well with Charlotte, as we saw at the bottom. But yeah, finally got his cup, so at least there's one. Looking back on it, Scott played for three teams. The Philadelphia Flyers, where he spent the majority of his time, the St. Louis Blues, and the Flow Rida Panthers. He also set the new wins record, as the previous one was with Martin Brodeur at 691. He signed 23 years worth of contracts with an estimated earnings of near $155 million. I feel like I'm missing something here, but he won the Vezina three times, the Jennings once, that would have been the season with Hornquist, and one Stanley Cup. Well, there you have it. The goaltender that took over Martin Broder's record had only one Stanley Cup in their 23-year career. I appreciate you guys for watching. If you could leave a like and subscribe, that would be fire. And on that note, I will see you soon.